Your obsession with reaching a healthy BMI is exactly what is preventing you from reaching a lower BMI. Let me explain. You see, BMI or body mass index is just a height to weight ratio. The only thing it tells me is how big you are, not how healthy you are. And if you want a real quick way to change your BMI, go talk to your pal Elon and get him to shoot you up to the moon and you will definitely have a lower BMI. When we look at this graph right here, you can see all the various BMI categories. We go from underweight to normal weight to overweight to obesity, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like at the mystical, magical line between normal and overweight BMI is suddenly where somebody goes from healthy to not healthy. I'm really not sure what happens at this line, but we really think that something suddenly changes there. And thus, I get hundreds of comments on my YouTube page of people being obsessed about they need to reach a healthy BMI, and if they don't reach this healthy, normal BMI, well then their efforts are futile. But here's the problem. For a vast majority of people that are struggling with obesity, reaching a healthy BMI is completely unrealistic. So let me use an example to clarify things. Let's say somebody is approximately 240 pounds or about 108 kilos, and they stand at about 5'5 five five or 165 centimeters. That will give them a BMI of 39.9. And thus with that BMI, they would fall into the class two obesity category. And in order for this person to be at a normal BMI of 24.9, they would need to weigh 149 pounds. That would mean they need to lose 91 pounds or 38% from their baseline weight of 240 pounds. So A, that's, that's a lot of effing weight. And B, from a clinical perspective, well, that's extremely unlikely. And the reason I say that is because if we look at the current treatments on the market, we have diet and lifestyle, we have medications, and we have bariatric surgery. And thus far from the data, we would expect a patient to lose the following amounts. So with Wagovi, approximately 15% from their baseline. Zepbound is a little bit better. People can lose about 21% from their baseline weight. And then with bariatric surgery, in the best case scenario, on average, people might lose approximately 35% of their baseline weight. So that's, that's almost to that 38% from baseline, but it still comes up 3% or approximately seven pounds short of reaching a normal BMI. So simply put, trying to aim for a healthy or normal BMI is just unrealistic for 99% of people. It just ain't gonna happen. And hey, if you are enjoying my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well. Check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel. Each month I do an exclusive live with the OG members. We cover a variety of topics around the weight management space to help you build the skills that you need in order to lose and maintain your weight in the long term. These are all skills and videos and such that do not come up on my regular feed. So be sure to sign up today. Plus you're also supporting one of your favorite creators, which is always a huge huge bonus too. As well, the OG members get to bring all of their questions and concerns to the live sessions and I do a live Q&A where I answer your questions in real time. So be sure to check it out. All of the links and everything you need is down below in the description. But do you know what is more likely to happen if you continue to strive for this goal? You see, you're gonna set out on your journey, you're gonna lose some weight, and hell, you might even feel fantastic, you might be off of your medications, you might be doing things you haven't done in years because of your weight, you might be living your absolute best life. But you're gonna ignore all of that. Why? Because it's not good enough. None of that will be good enough until you reach this arbitrary, healthy, or normal BMI. And so, despite everything being fantastic in your life, you're gonna constantly feel frustrated. You will continue to hold yourself back from feeling joy, happiness, and being present in the moment. You will continue not to show up in life and not to live life on your terms. And while you say it's because your BMI is not good enough, really the sub messaging you've got going on there is that I am not good enough. I am not deserving of being happy, of being loved, of living my bestest life 
because I haven't reached a normal or healthy BMI. Unfortunately, at some point in time, you're gonna become so frustrated with not reaching your normal or healthy BMI that you're gonna say, fuck it. And you're gonna give up on all of these excellent and amazing healthy behaviors and stuff like that and start regaining the weight back. That is exactly what is going to happen. And so, if you haven't figured it out yet, the BMI is shit. As I said before, it is just a height to weight ratio. It tells me absolutely nothing about you as an individual and how healthy you are. And in fact, I can prove it to you. Now, if we look at this lovely little graph right here, we've got four lines on this graph and it's broken down into the four BMI categories of overweight all the way up to class three obesity. And what we're looking at is the risk or the mortality risk over a period of time. So the number of people that are still surviving after X number of months. And as you can see, regardless of the BMI category that you're in, your risk of mortality is essentially the same. So this is where that whole mystical idea of normal to overweight suddenly comes in, where that once you cross that line, your risk of death is basically the same across the board, regardless of what your BMI is. And basically what this graph is saying is that someone who is a overweight, has no health conditions whatsoever, has the exact same risk of dying as somebody who is in class two obesity, has diabetes, has hypertension, heck, has he maybe even had a heart attack. I'm hoping that all of this is, is sounding pretty darn ridiculous in that weight alone is like the only risk factor that is going to drive your chances of dying and all of these other health conditions that we've been told to be worried about over all these years don't actually matter. And obviously that is not the case and that is why we need to look at an individual that is sitting in front of us and assess their own individual risk regardless of what BMI category they're falling in. And that is exactly what clinicians like myself do when we use a tool such as the Edmonton Obesity Staging System, or the EOS system. And here is the EOS system nicely broken down for, for you. As you can see, it goes from stage zero up to stage four. And with the EOS system, we actually take into account the existence and the severity of weight-related outcomes. And with this information, we get a much bigger and better picture of an individual's overall health status. And with a better picture of an individual's health status, then I can actually stratify what their risk is, what kind of treatments we need to look at, and what their potential risk of dying is in X period of time. And as you can see in this lovely little graph here, we get a much prettier breakdown. And what you can see in this graph right here is that as an individual's EOS stage increases, so does their risk of dying. And do you see that little black line up there? That's the EOS stage zero. So those individuals could fall into the overweight category, they could fall into class one, two, or three obesity category. Regardless of what their category is, they have no comorbid weight-related conditions. And over a 16-year period, they had virtually no increased risk of death from any cause. And on the flip side of things there, when we look at that blue line, those are individuals that have obesity and they're at EOS stage three. They had a only about 60% that were still surviving after a 16 year period. So when we have multiple comorbidities and that EOS stage goes up, so does their risk of potential mortality from any cause. So when we looked at BMI alone, we really got fuck all for information. When we actually look at an individual's other risk factors and health conditions and such like that, we get a much better picture of individuals that have no problems, no concerns, and heck, might not even need to lose weight. And we get the idea of other people who losing some weight, yeah, could potentially be beneficial for their health. And guess what? When we looked at individuals and their EOS staging, and we took into account the individuals that were engaging in regular physical activity and were modifying their dietary patterns to get more whole foods, more veggies, and that sort of thing, the mortality risk was almost entirely eliminated for all individuals in stage zero, stage one, and stage two. 
It was only at the highest EOS stages of stage three and four did they continue to have an increased mortality risk. And hey, if you want a tool that can help you on your weight management journey, then check out the link below for my seven day food journal. Now, this isn't your ordinary food tracking journal. This one takes into account a lot more factors and things such as your emotions before and after a meal, what your fullness level is, what are the other things and such that are going on in your life. It really looks at the bigger picture and what is the more important factors that come to the behaviors and such that we have around our eating and dietary patterns. So if you want something that's gonna help you to better capture that information and those ideas so that you can make some solid, significant changes along your health journey, well then you definitely wanna go down below, click the link and download my seven day food journal. So what exactly is it that I'm saying? Well, first off, you don't need to be at a healthy BMI. In fact, based on that data that I was just talking about, if you are in EOS stage zero to two and you're engaging in regular physical activity and you are eating a good, healthy, nutritious diet, well, you could actually stay at your current weight and your risk of mortality over that period of time is essentially zero. So you don't need to lose weight you could stay at your current weight if you wanted to. And, and as an FYI, I suspect that a vast majority of you that are currently following me and struggling with obesity are currently falling in between EOS stage zero to two. Now, the second thing that I'm saying is that your obsession with getting to this healthy BMI is exactly what is preventing you from getting to a lower BMI to begin with. So it's time to stop obsessing about the BMI. It is time to stop defining yourself based on your weight or your BMI. It's time to start looking at the bigger picture of health, start looking at how you feel, start looking at whether you're doing the things that you wanna do, whether you're showing up and being present for your kids, whether you're living life on your terms. And it's time to start realizing that you are not defined by the number on the scale, that you are worthy of living a happy, healthy, and beautiful life right now just the way you are. So stop delaying and preventing yourself from living the life that you wanna live until you reach X BMI. Start living that life right now. Achieving a healthy BMI for a vast majority of people is entirely unrealistic and is likely only going to lead to a crap ton of frustration and causing you to bounce and rebound the weight back. As I said, you'd be better off talking to your boy Elon there and getting him to shoot you up in a rocket up to the moon to get a lower BMI. So stop looking at that BMI number and letting it define you, define your health, and instead look at the bigger picture, look at the life and your current health status and the things that you are doing to be as healthy as you can be. Engage in the behaviors and actions, which actually are going to give you health and give you the life that you want, versus just a number on the scale or the blood work panel that your doctor is showing you. And I'm not saying that you can't lose weight or you shouldn't lose weight. If you want to lose weight, you definitely can. You are more than welcome to go out and do that. But it needs to be secondary to living the healthiest life that you can possibly live. Because when you're living your healthiest life, your happiest life, that is going to be the life that is going to be sustainable for you into the long term. If you can't sustain it because you're trying to get the weight lower, guaranteed it's going to be a recipe for failure. And so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you got something out of it, don't forget to hit that like and share button as well. Hit that subscribe button so that you never miss out when I put out another video. As well, check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel where you get an exclusive live with myself every single month. As well, you get to bring your questions, concerns, and I will answer them in real time. And of course, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. And as I always like to sign off, always remember that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to those massive peaks.